From TLDR News, this is your daily briefing for Monday the 23rd of May 2022. Good afternoon. Today we'll be discussing some of the biggest stories, including Australia's new Prime Minister and a new economic bloc. We'll also be discussing Ukraine's ceasefire negotiations. Like every day, that last thing is exclusively in the extended version of the daily briefing on Nebula, with that version being about three times longer than the normal show. I'm telling you that because just this week we're winning a special offer, 42% off. That's just $11.59 for a whole year. Anyway, it's linked below and I'll explain fully at the end of the video. But first, the US's commitment to defending Taiwan. Joe Biden has, today, confirmed that the US would defend Taiwan if they're attacked by China. The US president compared Taiwan to Ukraine by stating that the US's responsibility to stand with the independent island was even stronger following Putin's invasion. Obviously, this statement was not taken well by China, whose foreign ministry spokesperson said, on issues touching on China's core interests of sovereignty and territorial integrity, China has no room for compromise or concession. While the US officially recognises China's One China principle, unofficially it maintains a relationship with Taiwan, with the US having a de facto embassy in Taiwan and supplying Taiwan with military equipment for self-defence. Exactly how China responds to this announcement from the US is yet to be seen. Whilst in Tokyo, Biden also announced that he was to inaugurate a new Asia-Pacific economic bloc, formerly titled the Indo-Pacific Economic Framework for Prosperity, or IPEF. The bloc, consisting of the US, Japan and 11 other countries, together representing 40% of the global economy, resurrects the idea of the Trans-Pacific Partnership, which Biden's predecessor, President Trump, pulled the US out of in 2017. Designed to counter China's dominance in the region, the IPEF comes less than five months after China established their own Regional Comprehensive Economic Partnership that brought together 15 countries in the region, many of whom have now signed up to Biden's plan. Unlike the TPP, however, this new US-led bloc does not have the market access provisions, i.e. does not reduce tariffs, which has led some to question just how meaningful the bloc will be. On Saturday, Australia elected its first Labour government in almost a decade, and made Anthony Albanese its 31st Prime Minister, ousting Scott Morrison's Liberal National Coalition. There are still a number of seats to be confirmed, and at this stage, the centre-left Labour Party are just shy of a majority, so may require cross-bench support from smaller parties and independents. Aside from being a victory for Labour, the election saw the Greens gain ground, and the new Teal Independents, a group of climate action-focused but economically conservative independents, take seats from the defeated coalition. The success of these groups meant that the share of the primary vote held by the two main parties fell to its lowest level in modern times. Albanese's first job after being sworn in as Prime Minister is attending a meeting in Tokyo of leaders from the so-called Quad countries – the US, Japan, India and Australia. On Sunday, a colonel in Iran's Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps, or IRGC, was assassinated outside his home. According to reports, two gunmen on a bike approached a vehicle where Colonel Hassan Syed Kodiari was inside before opening fire. Kodiari was a high-ranking member of the Quds Force, the arm of the IRGC tasked with executing operations abroad. Kodiari's assassination is the second of a high-profile member of the Quds Force in recent years. Back in 2020, General Qassem Soleimani, head of the Quds Force, was assassinated by a US airstrike near Baghdad airport in a strike ordered by President Trump. At time of writing, no one has claimed responsibility for the assassination, although Iran's president has vowed to avenge Kodiari's killing and blamed elements linked to global arrogance, a reference to the US, Israel and their allies. The UN's refugee agency, the UNHCR, has, today, confirmed that the number of people forcibly displaced has surpassed 100 million for the first time ever. The figure represents more than 1% of the global population, equivalent in number to the 14th most populous country in the world. 
The UN High Commissioner for Refugees, Filippo Grandi, stressed that the staggering milestone must serve as a wake-up call to resolve and prevent destructive conflicts, end persecution and address the underlying causes that force innocent people to flee their homes. According to UNHCR data, by the end of 2021, 90 million people had been forcibly displaced, with conflicts in Ethiopia, Burkina Faso, Myanmar, Nigeria, Afghanistan and the Democratic Republic of Congo all publishing the figure higher and higher. The war in Ukraine has itself displaced some 8 million people within the country. That's all we have time for on YouTube today, but remember, it never gets cheaper than right now to get a full year subscription to Nebula. That way you'll get the ad-free extended briefing every day, including our discussion of the Ukraine ceasefire that's available to watch on Nebula or stream on your favourite podcast app of choice. Like I said, our friends at CuriosityStream, the streaming service which offers some of the world's best documentaries, is offering a deal whereby you can get both platforms, CuriosityStream and Nebula, for $11.59 a year. That's all the documentaries you could want on CuriosityStream and then more TLDR on Nebula, including the extended briefing, other full exclusive TLDR videos, and it's always ad-free. Click the link below to get both services for less than $12 a year, the cheapest it gets, while also supporting the channel.